This is part six of our video series where we learn how to build a squat rack in Fusion 360. In this video, we're going to be creating this pull-up bar. And so let's take a look at what we're building. We're building this pull-up bar up here. And if we look at Amazon, we'll actually see it actually came with some useful dimensions to help us out. Let's go back to the first image. You can see that it's bolted onto the side. So the first thing we need to build is this plate that's bolted on. And so let's start with a new sketch on this side face of our top left bar. Let's toggle our slice feature and move up to the top. Let's grab a rectangle tool. And I want you to lock it on to this top edge, not the tip top, but right here at this top edge go around the circle to this bottom edge. Again, not the very bottom, but this bottom edge right here. And then grab your dimension tool. Tell this line to be one inch from the circle and tell this line to be one inch from the circle. Now, if we look, we'll see that this plate and this, this thing in general is just a little bit thicker than what we've been working with. It's a different part. And so I'm gonna add my fillets now but I'm going to make my fillets and actually the entire extrusion a little bit bigger than we've been doing. So let's say 0.25 and then finish our sketch. And let's extrude this to be 0.25 as well. And make sure you select new component and hit OK. And next, let's mirror this across to the other side. So let's go to create mirror. Don't select component this time. This time I want you to select bodies and select this component, but we're only selecting the body within the component. And that is an important distinction. And for the plane, let's select our origin. And so you can see it's mirroring it across and we're getting it over here. Hit OK. And why was it so important to select body and not component? because now both of those bodies are inside this component. I didn't create a new component. I created a new body within this component. And let's go ahead and change the name of this component to pull up bar. And so if we take a look, it looks like there's two circles coming out of this at an angle, then it goes straight across and it angles back down. And so let's start with those two circles. Let's start a sketch on our new component here. And let's toggle slice so that we can see what we're doing. And let's draw two circles. Now, I'm not exactly sure how big these circles are going to be. So let's try something. And if we're wrong, we can come back and fix it. Let's tell them both to be one inch in diameter. So I'll just tell them both to be equal. Then I'm going to grab my horizontal component. I'm going to select the center of my circle and the center of this circle. And the same thing over here. And then let's see how far away these should be from these edges. Let's go to dimension. Let's go from this center to this center and let's just tell it to be one inch. And let's tell this one to be one inch as well. And let's see, is there a way we can check it? Well, it says that the edge of these two circles should be five inches away from each other. We can actually figure that out pretty easily if we go to create point and I'm gonna put a point down on both of the edges of these circles. And I wanna make sure they're stuck in place, so I'm gonna use my horizontal component to make them horizontal with those center circles that we used. So now it's fully constrained. And if I put this dimension down between these two points, it's gonna say, do you wanna create a driven dimension? Because it is fully constrained. We can't add any more dimensions, that's okay. Go ahead and select create driven. And it says the distance between these two edges is six, but we know that the distance between these two edges should be five, not six. So to fix that, let's change these distance dimensions. Let's change this to 1.5 and let's change this to 1.5. And you'll see that the distance between these two edges is now five inches, just like it is in here. Okay, let's finish the sketch. And so now what do we do? Well, the next thing we want to do is we want this circle to sort of go up into the left and then forward and then down into the right. 
And so what that is, is actually a sweep. And so to create a sweep, we're going to need a second sketch. So let's go to construct offset plane and let's offset from this edge. And I want to make sure that this becomes centered with that point. So let's go ahead and hit cancel. Let's go back into that last sketch and toggle slice. And let's again create a driven dimension between this face here and this point. And how far away are those? They're 5.75, and that's good information to have. If we finish our sketch, we can go to Construct, Offset Plane, select that same face that we selected a second ago, and move it in negative 5.75. And what does that do for us? It makes this work plane line up with the center of that circle. And hit OK. And so now I can start a sketch on this plane. And I'm going to hit P on my keyboard to project my geometry. I want to project this center. But I actually also want to project the center of this other hole over here. And hit OK. And so what does that do for me? Well, now if I grab my line tool, I can connect to this dot, drag up some distance, then make sure I go horizontally to the right. And I want to make sure I'm hitting the center of this, not the top or the bottom. So I'm going to find the center here. And you can see I didn't quite make this uh, symmetric. It's a little lopsided, but that's okay. We can fix this. Make sure this line is horizontal. And let's check what our dimensions are. And so if we go back first off, we can see that the height of this pull-up bar from this piece to the very top is 4 inches. And so we can add that dimension pretty easily. We go to Dimension, and we'll select from this edge to the top to be 4 inches. Okay, and then we take a look at the other image. It says it's nine and a half inches across from the base plate to the corner. And so we can do that pretty easily as well. Let's do this side first though, 9.5. And then we can do the same thing over here. Make sure that it doesn't become horizontal. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna select dimension. And when you select the line, when it's going diagonal, if you drag up too much, it'll change to horizontal. Keep it close so that it stays diagonal and type in 9.5 over here as well. And so now it should be perfectly symmetric. So let's select our fillet tool because if we look, it is curving. So I do wanna add a curve. And so at these two points here, let's fillet them and let's give it a big curve. Let's tell it to have a radius of five inches. And it looks like it changed some dimensions for me, no big deal. Let's finish the sketch and let's run a sweep. And so this sweep is gonna use both of these sketches that we just created. The first one was a while back now, but let's select that circle for our profile and let's select this path. And instead of doing this circle as well, um, we'll just mirror this in a second. We won't use that circle. Um, if we check, does it look good on this side? Yes. Does it look good on the other side? Make sure you don't have perpendicular selected. Make sure you have parallel selected and make sure you have join selected. And now it looks good on both sides and hit okay. And so if we look in the bodies of our pull-up bar, you'll notice there's only one body. That's what that join did. It combined these two separate bodies that we had and joined them together. Okay, so we have one of the two. We can pretty easily add the other end with just a mirror. So we need to create a mid-plane for ourselves. So let's go to construct mid-plane and let's select this face of our build plate and the other face of our build plate and so now we have a centered plane for ourselves hit okay and let's go to create mirror make sure you have features selected because i don't want to mirror everything just this very last feature this sweep across this plane here and hit okay and as long as we have this plane, let's go ahead and use it to go ahead and start sketching out these two circles here. And if you think about it, I don't have to sketch any of this over here because I can just mirror that as well in a little bit. 
And so let's start a sketch on this plane. And let's toggle slice so we get everything else out of our way. And I want to draw some circles, but first let's go ahead and hit the P button on our keyboard for project. And let's project this rectangle. And it only projects these lines. That's no big deal. Let's grab our line tool and turn on construction lines. I want to find the center of this line and drag it to the center of this line. And so that gives us some reference geometry in this direction to use. I'm going to grab my circle tool and I'll draw the one on the right first. Okay, that's pretty easy. I want a circle that is, ooh, let's undo that. Turn off construction lines and then grab my circle tool. And I want this circle to have a diameter of one inch. And I want it to be two and a half inches from the center so that if I mirror one, that one's also two and a half inches, making it a total of five inches. And so let's go ahead and create a point. And let's find the center of our line. And let's dimension this to be 2.5 inches away. And then over here, let's just grab our circle tool and let's just put it on the end here and connect it to the end over here as well. And let's finish our sketch. And we extrude these two circles, tell them to be two sided and tell them to not go a distance, but to object. And so on this side, I want it to go to this object. And on the other side, I want it to go to this object and don't have it on cut. Instead, change it to a join and hit OK. And as I look at this, this is looking a little thin. And so we might go back in time a little bit, find that sketch that we used to make those first circles. And let's tell them to be 1.5 instead of 1. That actually changes this to be 4.5. So we might have to play around with some more dimensions over here as well. That needs to be 5 inches. So let's tell this to be 1.25. And this one over here to be 1.25. That way I know that the center is still 5. So let's finish our sketch and see what it looks like. And it looks like it automatically told this circle to be bigger because I locked it onto the top, but it didn't tell this one to be. That's fine. We can fix that as well. Let's go to that sketch and find that circle and tell that. Let's go ahead and toggle slice so I can click on it. Tell that to be 1.5 as well. And hit finish sketch. And now we're cooking with fire. This next part is going to be a little tricky, but I do have a trick up my sleeve. Uh, do your best to follow along. Let's start with a new sketch on this top plane right here. And I'm going to go ahead and start with project. I'm going to project these two circles and hit OK. And just like before, I'm going to grab my line tool and create a construction line for myself. And instead of going from center to center like before, I'm going to go from point to point on the edges just giving myself some geometry to draw on. And then let's turn off construction lines and let's just connect these two with a diagonal line. And if we look here, it's going to be seven and a half inches. And so if it's seven and a half inches, maybe this is like 1.5. I don't know. We'll play around with the dimensions here. Let's tell this corner to be 1.5 and let's tell this corner to be Oops, let's try that again. Undo dimension. Let's tell this corner. Don't select this, select the point instead. Tell that to be 1.5. And if we did it right, this should be about seven and a half inches. Let's see what happens. And it's not quite big enough. Let's try changing that 1.5 to 1.25 on both sides. And we're a little bit closer. Let's split the difference again. Let's go to 1.125 and 1.125. And we're pretty dang close, but still not perfect. But at some point, we really just need to move on. It's not going to be exactly perfect, and that's okay. I'm going to use this line. 
to help me create a diagonal work plane. So I'm going to go to Construct, and I'm going to select Plane Along a Path. And I'm going to select this path. And so what does that do? Well, it creates a plane that's perpendicular with this half. And you'll notice that as I move it, it changes the distance. I'm going to tell it to be exactly 0.5 so that it goes exactly in the center. If I were to type in zero, it would start at one end. If I were to type in one, it would start at the other end. 0.5 puts it right in the middle and hit okay. And then I'm gonna start a sketch on this plane. And I'm gonna hit project. I want to project this body right here, but I also wanna project that circle origin that I was just using and hit okay. And so why is that so important? Well, because I'm going to draw myself a circle and I'm going to tell it to be 1.5 inches in diameter. And I want to tell it to be horizontal with this point, And I want to tell it to be vertical with this point, lining it up perfectly with our line. And so when I extrude this, it's going to go the diagonal direction we want. And so let's again, go to two sides. And the first side, let's tell it to go to object, to this object. And then on the other side, we'll also say to object and then go to this object. And make sure it says join and hit OK. I'm going to go find that open sketch and tell it to go away. And then close that out and close out all of these tabs over here. And then all I need to do is go to create, mirror, and select features. And I'm going to select these three features. And I want to mirror it across the origin. And hit OK. And then finally, it's supposed to be a little darker. And so we can go to A for appearance. And I'm just going to duplicate this because I'm OK with this staying gray. But on this one, I'm going to tell it to be a little bit darker and drag it in. And maybe not quite that dark, maybe a little bit brighter. Maybe a little bit brighter than that. And that looks pretty good. And if you look at that, we are done with this pull-up bar. Let's save our progress. And I'll see you in the next video.